Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the Grace Gang. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I'm telling you, he is worthy to be praised. And set your thermostat today so that um, you can recognize that the presence of the Lord is available to you today. We, we saw something last night when I was teaching. The fact that uh, people under the law kept trying to reach to heaven. But under the grace of God, God reached down from heaven uh, to touch touch man. And um, I, I'm telling you, this is just an amazing heavenly father that we have in our lives. And I think today ought to be a day of gratitude and thanksgiving for God. Just, you know, you're not asking him for anything. It's like you're not going to him like he's a gimme machine. It's gratitude today. Gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Just just having a flashback all day today and thanking God for what he's done and what he's doing in your life. So happy Thursday. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. Um, I'm excited about a lot of things today, but I am excited about the faithfulness of God. He is so faithful, so outstanding. And, um, you know, like we said the other day, I'm in it for the relationship. I'm in it for the relationship. And so uh, I send blessings out to you guys today. I say that you're blessed. I speak blessings over your life today. And I declare that even though weapons will be formed against you today, they will not work. They just will not work. And uh, yeah, man. So we welcome you today. We bless wherever you're logging in from. And uh, we say you are blessed. So we send blessings to Ghana, to Houston, Texas this morning. Forest Park, Georgia is in the house with us. Uh, New Mexico, we send blessings to you guys. Set that thermostat to your life today. Um, we declare that you're blessed going in and blessed going out in Montgomery, Alabama, and Arkansas, and Humble, Texas, West Virginia. We say you are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Gilbert, Arizona is in the house today. Tulsa uh, is in the house today. Zion, Illinois is in the house today in the name of Jesus. Michigan, welcome. Uh, Brookfield, Inglewood, California is up with us today. Tuscaloosa, Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, yeah, man, Bronx, New York in the house with us today. Jackson, Mississippi in the house. Hayden, Alabama is in the house with us today. And uh, Halifax is with us. Zachary, Louisiana. Praise God. Uh, new names and new cities and, and places I've never heard of before. North Dakota is in the house today. Man, I want to go preach in North Dakota. I want if anybody come. It'd be it'd be amazing journey. Never been there before. I'm telling you, you're in the house today. We bless you in the name of Jesus. South Africa, Thomasville, Georgia in the house today. We send blessings to you. Detroit, Athens, Georgia is with us. Welcome to the Grace Gang. Peachtree City, Georgia. Welcome to the Grace Gang. India is in the house with us this morning. And St. Louis, Missouri, Sacramento, California. Yonkers is, is here with us today. Um, and we send blessings to you guys. Irving, Texas, St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, praise God. Minneapolis. Somebody said, come to North Dakota. I'm coming. Uh, and Kona, Italy in the house today with us. Brooklyn, Enterprise, Alabama. Uh, we welcome you. We say you're blessed. Locust Grove, Richmond, Virginia, Conyers, Georgia, Boise, Idaho. We send blessings to you guys. Springfield, Noon Noonan, Georgia, Naples. Um in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, man, all is well today. All is well with you in Baltimore, in Los Angeles, all is well. Hampton Roads, Virginia, all is well 
with you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Noonan, Georgia, Virginia, Queenstown, South Africa. Um, yeah, man, it, it's 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 amazing. I'm going to be making some announcements next week. Uh, we're coming to Brisbane, Australia, uh, and we're coming to uh, Lagos, Nigeria. I'll give you some uh, detailed information about that. And uh, yeah, man, we are we are we ready to rock and roll, man. We want to we want people to understand grace and be empowered to change. That's why we have the grace, uh, the grace conference, the grace life conference. I mean, you get in there and your whole life changes. I mean, the, the power of God comes in that place. And and so I'm, I'm sending blessings to you today. You know, uh, Melchizedek bless Abraham by saying, and I want to bless you by saying that you're blessed today. Amen. Wichita, Kansas, Kansas. We, we send blessings to you today. Welcome to the grace game. Um, I know I'm kind of talking fast, but I'm, I'm telling you, man, be blessed today. Be blessed today. Yes. Be blessed today. You know, shake it off and be blessed. Keep it moving, man. Keep it moving. We send blessings to those of you in Mississippi this morning. Uh, Gary, Indiana, we say you're blessed today. Yeah, but you don't know what happened. Keep it moving, man. Keep it moving. I mean, listen, if you didn't have devils operating in in, in, in the world today and, and against you, 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 it'd be boring. You wouldn't have nothing to do. You know, we welcome Romania in the house today. We send blessings to you guys, man. Just keep moving. Uh, set your thermostat, man. And, you know, uh, God bless you and just just stay strong. We send blessings to Detroit, Rwanda. We send blessings to you guys. Stay strong. Don't give up, cave in. Uh, don't get weak because somebody talking about you. People always talking about you. I mean, until they learn how to treat themselves better, they're not going to treat nobody else better. Just keep it keep it moving, man. And just, just pray. The Bible says pray for your enemies. And I, I know why now. Uh, <laughs> amen. Uh, the blessing of the Lord to those of you in San Diego, California, Denver, Colorado in the house, Tennessee, um, uh, San Diego. Yeah, be strong and of good courage. And uh, Washington is in the house. Yeah, man, we're gonna we're just gonna you know what can separate me from the love of God, and 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 then there's the enemy trying to separate you from the love of God. Bruh, keep it moving, just keep it moving. All is well with you and your house today. You hear me, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We say you blessed today. And um, all your relationships, those of you in Zimbabwe, we call you blessed today. We bless your government. We pray for your leaders that you might live a quiet and peaceable life. Uh, and, and I thank God. I, listen, now we are at the place where we are totally dependent on God. That's where we are. Totally dependent on God. I mean, how somebody acts and what they do, it's, it seems like it's no longer predictable. But praise God, we serve a God that, you know, that remains the same. He's the same today, yesterday and forevermore. And I am so glad about his consistency. Someone that we can trust to be the same when we wake up in the morning and when we go to bed at night. And, um, you know, I'll say this to you, regardless of what you're facing, regardless of the emotional attacks. I've been meeting a lot of people that are under emotional attacks big time people that are recovering from trauma, people that are just trying to deal with how they act, <laughs> you know, and the regrets of what they've done in the past. Dude, receive the love of God today. Receive the love of God today. Receive forgiveness of your sins today. Receive this unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor today and keep it moving. All right. Praise God. God is so good. He's awesome and he's worthy to be praised. Let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. And uh, yeah, man, I, I want to encourage you today. I want you to get encouraged today. Yeah. Come what may, God will take care of you. Now, you just believe that God will take care of you. Take a deep breath and just, all right, God's going to take care of me. 
God's God's going to take care of me. God is my my rod and 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 my shield and my and my source. Uh, I believe that uh, somebody I think just said, I believe all of us are in preparation for what? For something. We're in preparation for something. And, and that's why I take it. I feel like I'm in training camp. You know what I mean? We're in preparation and we will be more than equipped because we depend on God for whatever come. Bring it on, devil. You want to dance? Let's dance. We have the mighty God. We have the spirit of God living on the inside of us. And I'm telling you, all is well. Somebody says, well, it don't look well. Hey, all is well. Help it don't feel well. All is well. But you don't know what the doctor said yesterday. All is well. You're setting that thermostat and you're going to keep it set. And all is well with you. Come on, Psalms 91 equip. Repeat after me. I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. Because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and he will show me my salvation in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. All is well with you. Your thermostat set, keep it set. Your thermostat is set, keep it set throughout all this day. Amen. So yeah, let's let's talk about, you know, again, this this time that we spend with God. I want to I want to start off with a definition of the word devotion. Because I, I believe this is important in our relationship with God. Listen to these synonyms: devotion. Having an allegiance, an allegiance. It also is defined as loyalty in the act of doing. Devotion is loyalty in the act of doing. Now, I want to I want to share these two scriptures with you. I promise you, I won't go throughout through the whole Bible, but Luke chapter eighteen. And um, verse one, it's a familiar scripture, but man, I love it. Luke 18 and verse one. And here's what he said. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. That word faint means to give up, cave in and quit. Men ought always to pray and not faint. The Amplified says, uh, also Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, and give up. Wow. Not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, and give up. Have you 
Have you given up on prayer and spending time with God? Have, have you given up? Have you, have you lost heart? Uh, and you just, just gave up on it. Um, the devotion that we have for our father, our friend is an allegiance. You know, we hear that word when we pledge allegiance to our, our flag. But I wonder if we have pledged allegiance to our, to our father, to our God in devotion to continue to spend time with him, that men ought always to pray and not give up on prayer, not lose heart on prayer, not lose heart or turn coward on prayer. Prayer is just an opportunity to spend time for him. Don't give up on it. And then look at this in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. 1 Thessalonians 5.17. This really... Uh, came on me when I on my way in and and to to do this. First Thessalonians five seventeen. He says this. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Be unceasing in prayer. Uh, praying perseveringly. Praying perseveringly. Uh, you are you are praying, and you are not going to give up on it. You're not going to cave in. You're not going to quit. I believe once again, I heard my spiritual father say this years ago, that every failure in life is a prayer failure. But every successful endeavor in life is, 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 is a prayer success. And, and remember, we're not talking about the religious form and fashion of praying. We're talking about spending time. Some of you ask, well, how do I spend time? We're talking about spending time in the development of our relationship through dialoguing with God. Prayer is not a monologue where you're doing all of the talking, but we're talking about dialoguing with God. You're speaking to him. He's speaking to you. And it's not a, a time you know, where you just kind of, you know, uh, put God at a certain time and a certain place. It's throughout the day. It's throughout the day. Now, here's the one thing that I realized, and this is why this came up. Here's one thing I realized that prayer is one of the greatest privileges that God has ever given to believers in Christ. One of the greatest privileges that God has ever given to believers in Christ. Now, I think about in Moses's day, when God came down to speak to them, they couldn't handle it. They were like, please tell God that let, let him let you, you speak for, for God because we, it's painful when he's speaking, you know? And I'm thinking like, whoa, dude, what a privilege to be able to, uh, house the spirit of God and to be able to hear a still small voice, to be able to pray to God and to receive from him, to dialogue with God. That's one of the greatest privileges ever to be given to believers in Christ. And I'm saying, don't turn coward. Don't cave in. Don't quit. Let's have a devotion and an allegiance and a loyalty in the act of actually doing it because of this wonderful privilege that we have before him. Wow. And then and then I want to share one more scripture with you. Hebrews 4, 16. Hebrews 4 and 16. Um, yeah, man, let's, let's spend time with God. Hebrews 4, 16, you know, there's a lot of things that can be handled in the time that you spend with God throughout the day. A lot of things, you know, people have a lot of questions and, and if you're spending time with that, with God and, and, and it, it, God will talk, I'm telling you, I am a serious living witness. I have asked God so many practical questions 
and and he's answered my prayer i mean stuff like god i lost this could you could you help me to find it and and he helps me to find it or i'm looking for a word to be able to articulate in a teaching to drive a point home and I and I don't quite remember what that word was. And I asked God, could you bring that to my remembrance? And he does. And every time he does that, I say, I just don't understand how people don't believe that that there's a God. I mean, here I am walking with him and you're walking with him and talking with him. And, and he's answering and guiding and leading. Oh, my goodness. I can remember when um, I was going through the the, the nerve pain of, of, of shingles. And it was so excruciating. And I asked the Lord, I said, please, God, if you can just take this pain away and let me sleep. I don't even remember falling asleep. Pain was gone. And then next thing I know, it was in the morning. That's how real my God is. I I just start crying if I start just talking about how his love is just so overwhelming. And you just start, you talk to him. He talks to you back. I've literally gone into meetings with no answer. And I'm like, God. Give me the wisdom. Show show me what to do. Show me what to do. And in the middle of me, you know, of course, you you walk by faith. It's kind of like when you turn the water into wine. It, it, it really didn't turn until somebody picked it up and started drinking. And I'm thinking like, wow, you know, going into a meeting, I hold my mouth up and then it flows out because I, I just trust he'll do that. Wow. I wish people could understand how amazing it is to have a real God who walks and talks with you every day. And I define that as prayer and the dialogue of prayer. And and look what he says in verse 16. He says, let us therefore come boldly with confidence here unto the throne of, watch this, grace, that we may obtain, look here, mercy and find what? Grace to help in a time of need. Bro, I'm telling you, the Amplified says, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us. He says that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good times for every need, appropriate help, well-timed help, coming just when we need it. Look how he defined help. It's not the help like you want it to be, but it is appropriate help, well-timed help. I got a revelation of that, that, you know, sometimes, you know, and, and, and again, it's about changing the question. If I should ever ask for help and it doesn't come like I want it to come, I pause and say, all right, Lord, what, 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 what are you trying to show me? What do I need to be getting out of this? Versus asking the question, how come you didn't do me? Do, do help me. Why well, come you didn't show up? I'm going to leave the church. I ain't going to have nothing else to do with you no more. I'm just going to be an atheist because you didn't, you didn't give me what I want when I want it. Sound like a little child that need to be. Hey, that bullshit. La, la, la. I asked the Lord what I said. Well-timed help. That's powerful. Appropriate help. That's powerful. Coming just when you need it. Coming just when you need it. That is so powerful. All of that comes as a result of the time we're spending with God. So there there are a couple of things I want you to recognize here. Number one, uh, by, by trusting in the blood, let us therefore come bold into the throne of grace. I trust in what the blood of Jesus has already done for me. I trust in what the blood has done for me. Uh, And when I, when I understand what the blood of Jesus has done for me, I know that by the blood of Jesus, I have a blood bought right to come boldly to the throne of grace. That's a right that I have because of the blood that he shed. I have a blood bought right to come boldly to the throne of grace. That is my blood bought right. Jesus shed his blood so I can come with confidence, with confidence to the throne of grace. Not, not just, uh, you know, you know, shaking and scared. Oh, I don't know if he going to receive me. No, I am a child of God, bro. I'm not a visitor. That's my daddy. Hallelujah. I've been adopted into the family. 
I come with confidence and assurance and boldness through the through the blood of Jesus. I have a blood bought right to, to, to talk to God and to come boldly to the throne of grace. So that's the first thing I want you to realize. <clears throat> the second thing. When I come to the throne of, gate, throne of grace, I expect to receive mercy and find grace. I expect to receive mercy. I don't go begging God. Well, you know, God, I, I need some mercy here. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, Jesus. You hear me? H have mercy. No, no, I expect to receive mercy. I, I expect to, I expect mercy and grace because of the blood of Jesus. I expect it. Now, um, expectation is the breeding grounds for things happening. It's the breeding ground for miracles expectation. I don't want you to take that little word for granted. When you approach God, approach him with expectation. I'm not wasting my time when I spend time with God. I hadn't wasted my day when I spend time with God. I don't waste my time when I'm praying to God. I'm not wasting my time when I'm praying the word to God. I'm not wasting my time when I'm asking him questions. I'm not wasting my time. No, I am in earnest expectation with my neck stretched out. Hmm. Why, why is my neck stretched out? Because I'm expecting to receive mercy and grace. All right. And then here's the third thing I saw in that scripture. In the time of need. In our time of need. Um, it's something here. Sometimes we think that we know the time that we need it because you don't really realize just how much you got in you in the time of need. I trust God to know when I need, when I need what I need. I trust God. And, and, and that's this thing, you know, in, 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 in our time of need, well, when is our time of need? We don't want to say, well, I'm just too lazy to do it. So, Lord, I need you to do it. Well, Lord, I need you to go to the hospital. He's not an errand boy. You follow what I'm saying? But when we need him, he'll he'll be there. I expect God to, to show up. And then I expect mercy when I need mercy. That's another perspective of it. I expect mercy when I need mercy. And I expect grace when I need grace. Amen. And so for me, every day, I'm I'm in I'm 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 always expecting every day grace and mercy. I, I just thank God for it. As I'm growing, as I'm on the journey, and as I'm maturing, I expect the grace and the mercy. And I'm telling you, that's power. So who can come boldly to the throne? Anybody that will trust in Jesus and the blood. If you trust in Jesus and trust in what the blood has done for you, you can come boldly and with confidence and freedom to the throne of grace. I'm telling you, man, this is this is a, a powerful thing. So I'm saying uh, have an allegiance to the time that you spend in prayer. Have an allegiance uh, um, and a dedication to having a dialogue with God and and don't listen to all of the you know the naysayers well you 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 mean to tell me you actually talk to God yeah I do and he talked back to me and people think whatever they want to think you just keep it moving you got to stop you know letting folks interrupt your your groove with God stop it People going to think what they want to think, say what they want to think, say, and just be free. Be free. Remain delivered from uh, approval addiction. That That's a lot of you. The social media has bought into this thing where people just looking at comments to see if they can get people's approval. I mean, stay free from approval addiction. Uh, stay free from comparing yourself amongst yourselves. The Bible says that's not a wise thing to do. You just put pressure on yourself. 
and stay free from seeking the validation of other people. If you can do that, God's going to be able to use you. And, you know, if you'll make a commitment and a devotion to spend time with God in prayer, not just segregate a time for God, but to say, I'm up. I have a relationship with Jesus and I'm going to spend time talking to him and walking with him. And that's that's called worship. What, what we're talking about, that's real worship. It's, it's, it's like God use me, whatever you need to do through me, say through me. Uh, it becomes an amazing, amazing thing. So, all right. That's what I had on my heart to share with you guys. I really appreciate you guys allowing me the opportunity to join you in the grace gang and to share my heart with you. And, uh, if nothing else, you know, to challenge you to go get in the word, to challenge you to grow up, you know, you can't remain a baby all your life. You can't remain immature all your life. And that's why here at the Grace Gang, we're just growing together. Just everybody's growing together. I don't ever want to cease to grow. Okay. I remember when God spoke to me about grace, I just knew something was missing. And he asked me, will you be a student of grace? I'm like, a what? A student of grace? And, and I, I get it today, of course. But back then, I'm like, I, well, I, I don't know what a student of grace is. And there's something about always, you know, maintaining uh, a position where you're just always growing. Don't ever get to the point where I've grown. I know everything, you know, and then arrogance moves in and then you start marrying methods. And and then you and then you look up one day, you know, you start off, you know, uh, um, you know, pow, uh, uh, powerful uh, and then popular. And then you go from powerful to popular to pitiful to poor to just a mess. <laughs> Don't let that happen. Just stay in God. Recognize, you know, who you're serving and don't be afraid to be who God made you. Quit trying to trade in your valuable self for some cheap copy. And um, we're going to be all right. So let's spend time with God. Everything's going to increase. Everything's going to happen that you've been trying to get to happen. If you spend time with God and uh, let that dialogue play itself out. And like I said, you know, you know, I'm, I'm in it for the relationship. I'm not in it for the benefits. The benefits are tied with the relationship, just like the wet tied with the water. I'm in it for the relationship. I want to know God. I want to know God and I ain't in it for nothing else, whatever. And you'll find out that blessings will come on you and people get jealous of you because they're trying to figure out what are you doing wrong? Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm prophesy something right now before we get off. I prophesy and pray and declare over your life. Glory be to God. That thing just hit me. That you are going to walk in the blessings to such a degree that people are going to accuse you of doing something illegal to get it. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to say that right now. I mean, I'm going to say it right now in the name of Jesus, the, the blessing of God and that empowerment from the Holy Spirit to empower you to do whatever he's trying to get you to do. I had to say that because I'm not just talking about money. I'm including whatever that is, but I'm not just talking about that. But the blessing of God finna come over you so big time that that it's going to look like, you know, somebody got to ask the question. Well, what, what did you do? What did you do to, to get this to happen? What? Get ready. Excuse me. Glory to God. The blessing getting ready to run you over. Y'all better listen. Don't be running fast trying to outrun the blessing. Slow up. Slow up. Let that blessing over, overtake you, overrun you. Let that blessing overtake you, overrun you. Let that blessing overtake you and overrun you. And listen, you don't owe nobody no explanation for the blessing of God that's operating in your life. Keep it moving. Y'all ain't got me. Y'all ain't got me excited. I'm three minutes late logging off. I, I, I sense glory to God when, when sin abounds. Grace does much more abound. So the world can get as crazy as it want to get. It'll never, ever be able to outdo the grace of God. 
when sin abounds, grace does much more. When chaos gets crazy, the blessings become more abundant. Y'all better get ready. I'm ready. I'm in it for the relationship. I want Jesus. I want his presence. I want him to breathe on me. Like I said last night, he ain't got to have no long breathing on me. Just that's all I need. Glory to God. Just, just a quick, the breath of God on my life, it'll change everything. And my prayer for you today is that the breath of God will come over your life and you will have some outstanding things to happen today in your life. Favor, 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 favor. Every mountain in your life, I declare grace, grace, grace unto that mountain in the name of Jesus. Grace, grace unto that problem, unto that situation. Grace, grace over that need, over God Almighty getting ready to run you over. People are going to be thinking you did something crazy in order to get this to happen. God bless you today in Jesus' name. Love y'all so much. Come into New York City, declaring war on cancer in New York City, and it'll be April the 26th. Meet me there. And then it's time to go ahead and register for Grace Life 2024. Woo-wee! July the 11th through the 13th. Bruh, I'm telling you, it is good to have your heart fixed in the grace of God, to have your mind fixed in the grace of God. And I'm going to tell you right now. So go ahead, register, go ahead and get it out of the way. Register right now uh, for Grace Life 2024. It is going to be outstanding and uh, you don't want to miss it. I love y'all so much. Have an amazing day. Tomorrow is Friday and I will see you on tomorrow. God bless you, everybody.